Hello, beautiful souls. Thank you guys for joining me here and welcome to my table. So my collective friends, hello, hello. I miss you guys. I know it's been a minute since I've gotten a collective out and I've been champing at the bit to get one done. So let's do it. Um, I am guided towards the Wild Unknown Archetypes deck. There are two here that are calling, calling out here. I was not given any channeled messages, um, really anything to connect to. I do these collective messages a little bit more freestyle versus the structure of the other signs. If you have been here for a minute, you've seen. Okay, if you're new, welcome you guys. My name is Zachary. It's good to see you. And if you're returning, pull up a chair. It's good to see you guys again. Um, so let's get into this. Let's find out what's going on for Collective at this time. And I was trying to, I really wanted to do a reading for the Eclipse season and it just didn't end up happening. So uh, that's okay. I also wanted to in some way connect this message to the Eclipse and I'm just getting that I'm not supposed to. So um, I'm not going to, okay? We did have, I hope everything worked out well for you all during the portal season. Um, the solar eclipse here on the second in Libra. So a time to really start addressing, readdressing, fine tuning the ways that we connect with others, how we want our relationships to be, what kind of relationships we want in our life, which kinds we want to remove. Okay. So not necessarily saying this is connected, but uh, just I wanted to connect. I really wanted to, but um, I have no idea what the message is going to be today is what I'm trying to say. So let's find out. Two did fall out here. Uh, the vow and the nectar. Hmm. I'm gonna hold this up here. So the vow and the nectar. Um, both of these off the off the cuff here, off the top here. I'm getting um. Higher love by Whitney Houston. <laughs> Um, the vow, so something here, this could be a, a marriage vow, a promise of some sort, and more than just a promise, something that, uh, well, a vow, uh, this could, this could symbolize for someone here, maybe you are a part of a, a brotherhood or a sisterhood of some sort, and there is a vow involved in that way. Um, for others of you, like I said, this could be a relationship, marriage kind of vow, but I'm getting more, more of the feeling of a vow towards the self. Like remembering a promise that was made to the self here. The There are two hands clasped here and then hands that are supporting the wrists in this picture. This feels like a supportive message. It feels like a reminder. There is a force or entity, universe, God source coming in here and supporting a promise that was made. And I don't know if the, this could just be the destined life here you, you wanted to experience before coming here. Let's get into it a little bit further. So the nectar coming through as well. The nectar, this is um, a delicious energy that comes down through the crown chakra. This is uh, this nectar, very similar to the story of Shiva transmuting the poison from the snake in their throat, turning this into nectar to save humans, to save the humans, okay? Um, so it feels like a very divine energy, like I was saying, a very higher love, a higher vibrational energy coming down here. The thing with the nectar is we need to be open to receive this. It's not just going to, you know, come down and, and nourish us. We need to be open and inviting to that energy, prepared to receive that energy as well. Okay, let's go a little bit further. Which, which deck here next? Crow, Urban Crow, what do we have here? Please for collective. What do we have for the collective? <laughs> and I did uh, decorate for Halloween here, as you can see. I did start, I did have a couple fall out here. I'll, I'll mention, I'll get to this here in just a second. Um, here on the 6th, I'm filming this on the 3rd right now, right meow is my year, okay? I started a, a year ago starting this channel. A year ago, I started this channel. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. Um, I do intend to do a giveaway, you guys, uh, a free reading giveaway. Um, I will post instructions in the community tab and I intend to do it on my next all signs here. So I do have an all signs marathon 
reading that will be coming up. And if you don't know, all signs are every single sign. So if you're looking for additional readings, make sure to keep your eyes out for those all signs too. There are additional readings as I only do the signs once a month. Okay. So yes, keep your eyes out for that. I'll have uh, instructions on how to win that here soon. Bond and influence come through. So this is interesting, you guys, with the vow especially and bond now. This is leading me to a relationship like marriage kind of vow. This feels more like it could be symbolizing a, a marriage here for somebody at this time, pointing to that situation. But it does feel more like a like we're talking about a soul contract and not just a soul contract, but um, one where whoever this other person is that you're wanting to experience something with here. It doesn't have to just be a, rom a romantic relationship. I am getting kind of sisterhood, brotherhood vibes, you guys. Like a pact. Something that, you know, when, when we make vows like that, they do, well, kind of transcend time. They're not really promises that we make flippantly or, or shouldn't, should not make them flippantly. This is um, what seems to be coming up. This is interesting. You're being asked to remember a promise that was made, and this does feel like it was in another lifetime. It could have been a vow to one person in particular, but again, this feels kind of brotherhood, sisterhood kind of vibes. Somebody here with influence coming through. <laughs> so this talks about um, substance type influences. They're smoking and drinking crows here, right? <laughs> it seems that this behavior may be getting in the way of some sort of promise. Let's get into this a little bit further. Mm, what's next here? One star seed, okay. And we'll jump into the tarot. I did get a couple new decks. I'm excited to use those. This is the Starseed Oracle. What else do we have here for the collective, please? Anything? Whoa. Are these, what are we doing here? You want this one, okay. <laughs> um... You want all of them? Two in the hand. Okay. Ah, got it. Thank you, Spirit. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, they just like flew everywhere, all different directions. So a few here that are standing out. Earth School to start. Life Lessons, Soul Growth. Um, study and higher learning. Hey, there's your higher love. This card reminds us that, um, hey, sometimes life sucks. And the reason for that is for growth. Um, that is why things are difficult here is for us to learn to grow through them. So if you're experiencing something that's difficult right now, maybe you do have a marriage or relationship where your vow or promise is being called um, into question or to be um reinstated for you to pay attention to it it feels like something is difficult if that's the case relationship wise and you may be questioning like why the hell am i even doing this why what is the point of this and every situation is different you guys there are definitely times where we do say well i'm good <laughs> okay um this feels like though to somebody there is a need especially if there is any sort of substance type influence involved in this relationship something needs to be looked at a little bit differently the substances may need to be removed that does make things a little bit dif difficult to view clearly so earthed learning how to be human in the world but not of it interesting called soul gifts and training it's time to step up i again am very much getting this like uh brotherhood sisterhood kind of vibe a promise that was made a long, long time ago. You may have things coming up right now. Dreams, things maybe you're having a hard time putting certain pieces together, but this message is coming through, especially if, okay, I don't normally like to get too hot and heavy into influence, but this is feeling like a, 
an important message at this time. If you are somebody who is leaning heavily on drugs, alcohol is also a drug. I don't know why we say drugs and alcohol because they're all drugs. <laughs> drugs and alcohol. Um, this could be food, could be binge watching TV, could be relationships, sex, gambling, emotions, toxic relationships, anything, you guys. This feels like an exterior substance, though, drugs, drugs and alcohol. If you're finding, if you are one of these people where you're finding that uh, light crutch maybe has moved more into uh, heavy leaning on these, on these types of things, there is no shame or blame from me, certainly not. What is coming through, though, is that this is impacting your ability to maybe even follow through on a vow, a promise that you made. And I don't know, we'll get into this a little bit further. I don't know if the brotherhood or sisterhood is, you know, was this something here in the earthly plane? Was this something, it kind of feels, I'm getting the feeling that it's more outside of this third dimensional realm. But getting caught up in something like this is making it maybe even impossible for you to follow through on this vow. Okay. Okay, any other oracle cards at this time, spirit? Stick. Let's hope we could use the new animal spirit. All right, so Wild Unknown Animal Spirit Oracle deck here, and then I'll get into the tarot. Campbell. Interesting. Okay. A few did fall out here, actually. Camel, Nightingale, and Starfish. Let me hold these out for you. So the camel to start, this is um, essentially like being prepared or getting prepared to take a long trek of some sort. The camel holds water in its hump. There's heat resistance to this. There could be, um, the heat could be anger. The heat could be pressure, stress. This feels like the preparation before coming down. I keep seeing this earth school here, dropping down, coming down into this experience. You were prepared. You had what you needed. You still do. The Nightingale, this brings me to the voice. This is the connection of the heart to the voice. The voice is the portal, the first portal here to um, this third dimensional realm from our interior realm to manifest. Singing can be highlighted here with the Nightingale. This feels like the voice. Mm, I'm kind of brought back to my last Capricorn reading, the witch wound did come through on that. This could be attached to something like that, um, where there's difficulty in using the voice because the voice got you into a place in other lifetimes or this lifetime where persecution happened towards your divine feminine. Whether it's that specifically or something else, it feels that your mission here, like your vow promise that you came here to, to do, to partake in, was to use your voice, to recognize the power of your voice. The heart and the throat together, these are two very powerful portals. Speaking of portal season here, coming out of portal season, what I'm getting is you were prepared, okay, in coming here. If there's something that is impeding or interfering your ability to move forward right now, it's feeling like this is influence. And it may not apply to everybody you guys I get not everybody you know uses substances um but again like I said to broaden that out too it doesn't have to just be an exterior it feels more like it is but for some of you it could also be anything an addiction to anything okay very devil shadow kind of energy so the starfish being the last one to come through here this makes me feel like um there's something of not so much substance that has become a distraction. This could be image. Um, I'm getting, yeah, I'm getting more image on this. This in connection with the influence, having the bond and the vow coming through here. I feel like so far this message is a reminder here to not let yourself get distracted by the things that don't matter. And this doesn't feel extreme. I don't feel like someone's just like, you know, totally lost their way on anything. This feels like a gentle reminder, like, hey, <laughs> um, maybe we don't, you know, maybe we don't need to drink every day, right? 
what what I'm getting from that is it's less about whatever it is and more about why are you doing it? If something is a daily habit, there's there's a, a reason, okay? Either something has become addictive um, or there is an intention to change your consciousness <laughs> to numb yourself out. I know things are hard right now, like really weird. Um, I get it. I get it. Okay, let's get a little bit further into this with the tarot here. Which deck are we using? Ooh, the Curious. This is a new one. Curious Travels tarot here. So, Spirit, let's start off here with... What is the point of this message, please? <laughs> what does the collective need to know regarding this message? The Hermit. Interesting. The fool here at the bottom too. Faith comes through with the fool. So the hermit. This is um, solitude, isolation. This is Virgo energy here. I feel like to face the star. I'm getting the message, you guys, that somebody is somebody is feeling the pull or the call to their destiny and someone's afraid and this may not be conscious fear in fact it doesn't it doesn't seem that maybe it is illuminated in that way to most of you what i'm seeing is um the seed card in the wild uh wild unknown archetype deck here bumping up against the growth edge you have everything you need to grow. You have everything that you need here to do whatever it is you need to do here. You're reaching this pressure. You're bumping up against a growth edge. There's a need to push past that growth edge. We can either let that that uh, anger is what's kind of anger the same kind of energy that's required to you know for a seed to bust through its shell. Um that drive to make something happen that needs to happen and i don't i don't know if it's like i said the world shit right now i get it i get it it's difficult to be really in the zone all the time i don't think it is possible maybe <laughs> to be in the zone all the time we're always going to have a shadow here instead of knowing that this pressure you're feeling is bumping up against a growth edge you're feeling that pressure and something influence wise, drugs, alcohol, anything else, bad relationships, bad TV. <laughs> that choice is being made because you're not seeing that the need is to push through that. So there is this practice of numbing things out because it hurts. Maybe you've been alone for a while. If that's the case, if that's you or you've been alone here, what I'm getting is, especially if you've had more time to yourself, you are getting closer to this point of you're hearing this call, feeling this call. It's time for you to step up and utilize whatever is in that hump <laughs> for you to use here, your voice. But there's fear. So liberation is, is turning into chains. Hmm. Okay. Anything else here on the hermit, please, spirit? The moon. Fear. <laughs> Fear. I was just saying it. Um, the lobster here represents fear. Man's fears. Instead of, like I was saying, instead of as you're bumping up against this growth edge, feeling that pressure, letting that fear push you back, the moon is here to illuminate the way through those things that we do fear. We have to open ourselves up to what's going on in the subconscious, though, in the unconscious mind. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Okay. So what does this individual do about this, please, spirit? This fear. What do we do about this fear? What about the fear? I'm having a hard time holding these cards today. 
Seven of Cups and the Devil <laughs> there at the bottom. Hey, I was just saying that. Very Devil. The Devil. So we're, yeah, we're right here in the shadow, you guys. Facing, facing a fear. Seven of Cups is what came through here as far as what do you do. There is a need to make a decision for sure. Something is feeling... Um, there are too many choices or you're stuck in Delulu Nation. You're stuck in imagination land here, which isn't a bad place in and of itself, imagination land. This is where we do create from. We pull from imagination land into this reality. This feels though that this influence, the purpose of this, whatever the influence is for you, is to actually help keep you in imagination land because it hurts to be here. The issue with that is we need you here. <laughs> um, I think a lot of the time with Earth School, Earth School and Calder standing out to me here, with Earth School, there's that reminder, like I said, we're here to learn. The soul is here to grow and that's, that is what we're doing. We are experiencing being human at the same time, but it's for growth for our soul and it's for growth for other other souls outside of ourselves our spirit team our guides other entities that exists in higher dimensional planes we have a relationship with them because it's mutually beneficial our guides our spirit team they're not just here for us we're here for them too as a human being our ability to experience the shadow to navigate the shadow and have the light as well allows us to transmute energetic experiences for higher dimensional entities because they do not cross into the shadow. You see what I'm saying? What I'm getting here is that message is for someone just to remind you or to let you know that you being here has a purpose. Even if you can't see what's going on or what is the next step for you to take, which step is best for you to take next, Please understand that every everything that you do, every moment of every day, every thought, every emotion, every experience has a purpose to function on its own just because for it to exist, for life to experience that, to transmute things for yourself, to learn things and to help your spirit team as well do those things. So there's no need, there's no need to be stuck here in imagination land. There's no need to continue to try to leave constantly. Transcendental meditation is fantastic, but it shouldn't be the primary, okay? What I'm getting is actually we're needing to ground, okay? We're needing to ground something into this experience. And I think it might be a common occurrence or experience right now that people do want to release, you know, leave this body. <laughs> it's very dense and painful here. But you're doing really important work so we need you to pull your pull your experience back in into this body okay thank you spirit um one of these okay evaluation feed out what doesn't serve you reevaluate the situation so this could be um the influence for some of you or the reason why the influence is there the reason why there's a desire to not be present in the in your body. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, let's see here. I feel like there's one more on the Seven of Cups, the tower. <laughs> okay, the tower. So, down will come baby. <laughs> Cradle and all. With this connected to the seven of cups and evaluation, feed out what doesn't serve what doesn't serve you. What I'm getting from this is, are you going to do it or do you want me to do it? <laughs> OK, are you going to do it or do I need to take care of it is what is what spirit is saying. So there's a choice here to evaluate, to remove those things that are not serving you or potentially harmful. Or. This will be removed one way or the other, OK? When the tower comes down, if that's if that's the situation that you want to wait for, um, you know, we do have free will here. So 
that's your choice. But I don't, I just don't feel like, um, hmm, how do I put that? As someone who like, I, I smoked cigarettes for 16 years, right? I've been quit for several years, but it was one of the harder things, especially switching over to vaping to try to quit. It was one of the harder things or hardest things for me to quit in my life. What I'm getting from that is um, out of the like 26 times it took me to try, you know, trying to quit. Some of them were forced upon me. Some of them were by choice for myself. And as an example, I mean, like, well, I ran out of money, so I couldn't buy cigarettes. You know what I mean? Or um, I did plan I'm going to quit on this date and we're going to, you know what I mean? Um, that's kind of what I'm getting. It's always easier, I feel, to make that decision to do it yourself than to have that extra pressure of it being taken away from you. Because then you're scrambling to recenter even more to you started off kind of fumbling. I don't know. That's that's what I'm getting here. But whatever whatever this is that needs to leave your life um you're being asked right now to really take some time to seriously evaluate and make a concentrated effort to take care of it this is important enough that uh this whole message is about that i'm drawn back to the nectar here too this feels like a, a promise like a balm okay when you make the decision whatever this is that needs to be released from your life here influence wise this comes from the divine as support. Hyper healing is what I'm getting. I like that. To help you balance out a little bit quicker. Okay. Okay. Let's um uh why this message? Yeah, why this why this message, please, spirit? Page of wands. Um, so nine of nine of pentacles here at the bottom, too. Your um calm collected thought. What I'm getting is abundance okay your ability to have what you need and want here in this world to be comfortable with page of wands this revivifying experience adding energy back into your experience here i have a feeling as someone who like i said i smoked cigarettes for a long time i know how absolutely um heinous it is at robbing the body of energy of nutrients and that sort of thing. Um, I feel like that's what's going on for you guys too. And again, this doesn't have to be a physical, this could be the way that you engage with people, toxic experiences emotionally, relationships, okay? We all have a shadow is what I'm trying to say. We all have a shadow. This doesn't have to just be someone who uses drugs or alcohol, okay? But the point of this message is to help direct you back to a place of getting excited about your journey. Before you came down here, you were excited. You were, I promise. <laughs> Unless you're stuck here in a very um, terrible, like, karma trap, which if you're watching this, I, I you're not, okay? <laughs> you're not. Removing this may not be the easiest thing that you do, but it will help bring you back to factory settings is what I'm getting. Okay, thank you, Spirit. So what happens after... What do we have to look forward here, look forward to in it releasing this influence? What does the collective have to look forward to? What's next? Ooh, Page of Cups. So, and there's the Empress here at the bottom as well. Healing, nurturing. I feel like, um, ooh, okay, that makes sense. Because we had... Um, Oh, that's right. That fell out. I was like the father, the father card in the wild unknown archetype deck is what was standing out to me. It fell out when I was shuffling it before the reading. So that's why I'm like, wait a minute. I don't think the father energy came through in the wild unknown archetype when I was shuffling earlier, which is an energy of um, the divine masculine cleaving from the mother energy. The father is there to help cut the apron strings from the mother for the child as they grow older. The mother archetype tends to and nurtures the child for the first little bit the father archetype helps separate them from the mother so that they can move towards independence it's very beautiful intricate you know balance right that happens with the empress coming here what came through was that there is a need to separate from something with that father energy the influence there is a need to cleave from something here 
I think at one time what's coming through is that this, whatever this is, um, was comforting, was nurturing. Wine, cigarettes, weed, picking your nose. I don't know. You know what I mean? There was something comforting to this behavior at one point, and it's become toxic. So there's a need to cleave from that. Once that happens, then the, then the mother energy comes back through. Then we can start addressing nurturing and healthier connection again. I love that. So where, what's next in releasing this page of cups? This is, um, I do feel that there will be a little bit of tumultuous emotion. Like I was saying, um, this nectar coming through is that promise of there is support. Let's say you are looking to quit smoking cigarettes. Nicotine's a bitch. She, she, she is a bitch. Um, very diff it was very difficult for me to quit. I do understand that. So I'm getting the support coming in helping you work through that, to get through that. There could be love coming in for some of you. A new form of love towards yourself. But this is also pulling, um, since we have the Seven of Cups here, this is pulling, this fish is an idea that's been up here in imagination land. Whatever it is that you came here to do, you came prepared for, you can now pull that experience or reality into this experience. What is that spirit? Can we, I know it's going to be different for everybody. What is that fish? What is, what is it they're wanting to, or what's the mission? What is their mission? What is it they're here to do? Eight of cups. King of Cups here at the bottom too. So I do feel mastering the emotional experience a bit for sure. But Eight of Cups here, what I'm getting from this, so okay, we need to talk about addiction a little bit here. <laughs> um, addiction. When we have addictions, no shame or blame ever here on my channel, okay? Uh, but when we have addictions and we pass, when we transition from this life and we are heavily addicted or currently addicted to something, that is kind of a trap for the soul. And what I mean is when we pass, if there are addictions, the soul carries those and it is a distraction to the truth of the experience outside of humanness. And it makes it more difficult when you do come to reincarnate again to fully remember that you have options outside of just coming back to the same dog and pony show, okay? Until an addiction is handled, it will continue to come back life, life after life, okay? So if there's something that you're dealing with, and most humans do have some form of an addiction that is a part of the shadow, I think the difference between like a blind addiction and a, and something that you're aware of is um, what I, okay, let me try and slow this down here. What I'm getting is the devil card with the chains around the people's necks. They can take those chains off at any time. So what I'm trying to express is here as a human, we're always going to place those chains back on. Like that's, that's a part of the shadow. So the difference between being aware of an addiction is knowing that you can take off or, you know, the chains, or if it's unconscious, you feel like you're just trapped. You don't understand your power sovereignty in this situation, your ability to make changes. But that's what I'm getting here is that cycle doesn't have to be for everyone, whoever this message is for, is making it difficult for your soul to move forward <laughs> in growth. Eight of Cups here, this is leaving something behind, knowing when to leave something behind. It's also feeling like something is missing when it's not. That's where I'm being led to this quality of the addiction, not knowing, you know what I mean? And not bringing you back around. So you're here to feel whole, to recognize that there isn't anything missing. That feeling of something missing is what is pulling you to whatever this influence is. Okay. What's next here, Spirit? I want to ask specifically, how do they um how do they leave this behind? Once and for all. 
How do they, how do they handle that? How do they take care of this? <laughs> With love. Higher love. Think about it. There must be a higher love. Strength is what comes through. How do you handle this with strength? Not with force. So this is perfect, actually. That's a perfect answer. Thank you, Spirit. When we're talking about something we may be struggling with addiction-wise, it is not about force. But Zachary, I understand, you know, you know, there's a time... <laughs> What I'm getting is like detox or, you know, there is there is a time where there is willpower that is needed to to get yourself through cravings of something. But that's not that's not force. OK, um, you have when you are finally able to overcome something, it's because you've allowed yourself to have compassion for yourself, to have flexibility, self-love, recognize the love component of this with strength, the higher experience is quieting the animal lower animal impulses that are upset here with a gentle hand there is not force that's happening strength comes when we validate acknowledge the truth what's going on i am struggling shit i am addicted here you know i could use help maybe those are all forms of that gentle hand, that love towards those animal impulses. You're not going to fight fire with fire here, okay? You can do what you want, it's your life, but that's not going to, that's not going to, okay. What I'm getting, what I'm feeling encouraged to express here is there's a difference between being, um, we'll use alcohol as an example a non-drinker and um, somebody who used to be addicted to alcohol. There's a difference between um, somebody who is sober and a dry drunk. And the difference is force. What is a dry drunk? A dry drunk is somebody who doesn't drink. And this doesn't have to just be alcohol. It could be any substance. Is someone who doesn't drink but thinks about it all of the time. They're constantly relapsing without the substance inside of themselves. Why? Because they never got to the bottom of what the issue actually was. There was never recognition, validation, support for the self, flexibility, love, compassion. Versus somebody who is now sober. I just don't drink alcohol anymore, even though it used to be a problem. That's somebody who's gone through the experience of seeing themselves and why they were doing something and what was actually going on there, okay? Okay, I feel like we're getting to the end of the message here. Is there any other... I do get... Okay, I'm going to use the new animal deck here. Additional messages here for the collective. Dovetailing on strength here. Energy that they need at this time. There we go. What do they need at this time, energy-wise? Oh, <laughs> the eagle, freedom, perspective, and victory. Yes, that is what you need at this time. So it feels like there is a need for a different perspective. A few of these did fly over here, but I don't feel they're part of that. How do we get, how do we get the collective perspective here at this time? What, what I'm getting is this circle track experience. Like there are points where there are promises being made, maybe even to yourself back to the vow here. I'm going to stop this at this point. I'm no more today. I'm not going to start until later in the day, or I'm not going to buy this or that today. I'm not going to partake in this, whatever. And these promises just continue to get broken. How do we break that cycle? How do we break that cycle, spirit? How do we break that cycle? <laughs> the Empress. Oh, <laughs> Queen of Swords here, too, at the bottom. So being honest with the self, for sure, with the Queen of Swords. She is pursuing truth no matter what. She's not going to be a jerk, but um, she's blunt. She is wanting to know the why behind everything. And this feels like it's important for you guys, too, to know why you're operating in that way. 
Because once you know why, then you can start to dismantle it from there. But the Empress here, how do we break that cycle? With love, you guys, <laughs> with compassion and nurturing. What I am very much getting that, that experience of like force, okay? We live in a world where the divine masculine has definitely been the predominating energy in that way. You need to do something, you know, you need to quit a habit or whatever. Just do it. Just do it. <laughs> That's that divine masculine action, right? Um, with the Empress coming through here, I feel, especially because they've got the stars blinding her around her eyes here. Um, you're being asked to like shut off the exterior vision here. To go with the feels inside. Go by sight, by emotional sight. And I don't mean the emotions of what's leading you to, like, pay attention, okay? Starting to pay attention to those um, emotions that are coming up. Getting out into nature is something that is always helpful. Connecting to the earth, I recommend that all the time. Allow our mother to help you release that, okay? Okay, let's close this out with an oracle card, please, spirit. Do you want? I don't even have that one out. Hold on. Blue Angel Oracle. Here we go. What do we have here for the collective final message? Please, Spirit. And I do, I'm not going to do an extended on this one, you guys. Um, but I do have personal readings open and available. If you are interested in that, you can check out the description of this video. My website is in there. A Night on Earth. Interesting. I'm going to read this from the book here real quick. Magical new beginning. Yay. Yay, yay, yay. So this card symbolizes the start of something new. A magical experience unfolds to allow you to move forward safely and with confidence. The path is clear and nothing can stop you now except your own negative thoughts. <laughs> Let go of any old ways of thinking and trust. That's kind of what I'm getting with the, bl the stars blinding here. We're going off of trust. Your future will not be the same as the past. Life is full of possibilities. Believe it and it shall be so. Inside you there is a knowing that embraces all knowledge. Live through this knowing and life will seem like an endless blessing. You deserve to be and have all that your heart desires. Yay! Keep your face always towards the sunshine and shadows will fall behind you. Walt Whitman. All right, you guys. So... Totally. This this feels like a nice, solid message here. I'm happy with the way this came out. Um, and I'm also extending some comfort, you guys. If, if you are going through this, this is what's up right now. I can completely feel, feel you there, that call when we, when we do get that call of saying, okay, like you've had your fun, you know, we need you, we need you now is, is what I'm getting. We need you now, collective. Anything fabricated of the earth here that may be pulling your attention severely, okay? I'm not saying like exit, exit the world system right now, influence-wise. If it's become something that dominates your thoughts every minute of your day, your mood, then this call is for you, okay? I know you can do this. Please be patient and kind with yourself. Throw some compassion in there. I'm sending you my compassion too, okay? I love you guys. So, collective, thank you guys for being here. I hope that this is helpful. If this reading did resonate with you, please uh, consider liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. I'd love to hear if this does resonate with you uh, in the comment section, what you guys may be going through. Please keep in mind that um, uh, others can be triggered by experiences, so just, you know, with what you're sharing, please keep that in mind. Others do have trauma too, okay? And um, yes, readings are open. That's what I was saying. Readings are open and available. If you wanna check that out, my website is in the description of this video. I do have my Cash App and PayPal links there too if you feel called to tip or donate. I truly appreciate the support to those who do support the channel in that way, it goes a long way. So thank you, my friends. I love you, I love you. I hope you're all doing well and I'll see you very, very soon. Take care.